Ever since the TV series hit our screens, it has proven to be one of the most watched and successful television series. The series has been quite a thrill and known for its hit with audiences and critics. But I think fans of this popular TV series might be eager to know some of the behind the scenes of their favorite show. Well, I guess that's where I come into the picture. In today's video, we'll be revealing to you the behind the scenes moments of the popular TV series, The Blacklist. The Blacklist is filled with all manner of shocking twists and turns. But before we get into the juicy details of today's video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel. Well, let's get right into it. In this world, there are no sides, only players, says the former government agent character Reddington. On September 23, 2013, the American crime drama television series premiered on NBC, introducing Raymond Red Reddington, played by James Spader. Spader was a high-profile criminal that also had a list of criminals he complied with in his illegal business dealings. So far, the season has been on our screens for seven seasons, and it has always kept our toes curling in suspense. It's indeed a show where nothing can be predicted. In this series, Red strikes a precarious partnership with the FBI when he snitches and leads them to some of the most menacing criminals in the country, where in return demands an involvement with a specific profiler slash consultant, Elizabeth Keen, played by Megan Boone. They were also joined by Hisham Tofweek, Amir Arison, Harry Lennox, Diego Kladnov. If you've been closely watching the series, there seems to be so many hidden secrets behind the TV series scenes that you don't know about. Without wasting any more time, stay tuned as we take a look at the most shocking behind the scenes about NBC's hit series. Crime leader turned FBI informant Whitney Bulger inspired the original concept. During the conceptual stage of the series, executive producer and show leader John Isendrath tried creating a crime show that didn't really fit the usual mold of having bad guys chased by a hero cop. Instead, he wanted to make a show about a criminal playing the good card, which sounds a lot like Whitney Bulger, the crime boss who led the Winter Hill gang in the Winter Hill neighborhood of Somerville, right? John Esendrath explained during an interview that he intends to put a show out there around the time Bulger was apprehended in Santa Monica in 2011. He stated, So the idea was, well, what would happen if a man like Whitney Bulger turned himself in and said, I am here. I have some rules I want you to follow, but if you follow them, I will give you the names of people that I have worked with during the 20 years that I have been a fugitive. James Spader wasn't cast until three days days before the pilot was filmed. I cannot imagine the blacklist without Raymond Red. It was reported that James did not sign off for the role until it was at the production stage. Initially, John had offered Red to stars like Brian Cranston, Richard Gere, Kiefer Sutherland, and just three days before the pilot entered production, Spader agreed to join the cast. James Spader intentionally went bald for the role. It was reported that during a press conference call with different media sources in 2013, Spader explained, It was an idea that I instigated and I think it was the right choice. It just seemed to fit his lifestyle. He saw someone who has to travel lightly and move swiftly, and it seemed eminently practical for him. In his past movies, the lead actor left his long hair. Spader brought up the idea of Red wearing his signature fedora. Reddington already managed to stand out as one of the most iconic characters on television presently, contributing the success of the character's looks with his signature fedora. The decision that had Red go bald wasn't the only contribution James made to the show. His idea of making the character appear in the classic hat was also taken into action. During an interview with Today in 2014, James Spader was asked to confirm if he was the one that came up with the idea. He replied, saying, yeah, it was. It seemed eminently practical, but of course, now it's ruined fedoras for my life. I've always worn hats, but I've had to put my fedoras on the shelf and pull out my Homburgs and cap. Megan Boone wears a wig on the show. During an interview with hosts of Hoda Koth and Kathy Lee Gifford of today, Megan said, British actors wear wigs a lot. I find it to be a nice ritual at the end of the day. Take the wig off clean the makeup off, go home, leave work behind me. Megan also added that the wig gave her a more naive and younger look. Who would have thought it wasn't her natural hair though? Megan Boone had just one week preparing for her best audition. According to the actress, she had to put in all she had into her audition, which she saw as one of the best of her career. Megan played as the FBI agent Elizabeth Keene in all but a number of episodes of The Blacklist. This clearly required her to take extra steps to ensure she was the best candidate for the role. In 2013, she said to TV attic that once I got a hold of the blacklist and I read it, I was immediately kind of drawn to the character Elizabeth Keen and I worked really hard on it for about a week before I met with John Isendrath, Joe Carnan, and John Bokenham, who directed it. In that meeting, I just kind of put it all on the table. I probably gave one of the better auditions of my career because it was one of the more important ones to me. After her first audition, Boone had to do a lot of deeper reading until she eventually got closer to Liz's character. There was a combined live action and animation in the season 7 finale. As much as 2020 brought everyone to their knees because of the coronavirus pandemic, the television and film productions worldwide were not left out. The NBC series producers and NBC came up with an interesting and unique solution to the problem announced on the finale of Season 7. It was reported that the season finale would be released a few weeks early and be animated by
by combining live action footages already filmed before the production was shut down with a similar form of animation into some things we all see in a video game of the 21st century video game or a graphic novel. During an interview with ET, the series producers John Bokenow said, We only shot three or four days or four episodes, so we were about halfway through filming the episode when the shutdown happened. Executive producer John Eisendrath and I were kicking around ridiculous things like, Why don't we play an old time radio show? We thought maybe we can use some of those images from comics that are like the likeness of the characters and cut to them while they're still talking. Eventually, that involved in finding a company that could actually pull it off. Show production would not have been possible without animation. Technology gave John Eisendrath and John Bokenham the opportunity to pull off one of the largest action sequences on the blacklist to conclude the seventh season with the use of animation. Reporting to ET during an interview, we had a big helicopter sequence that we could have never done. Someone was supposed to open up a suitcase filled with paper and it was supposed to fly through the rotors of a helicopter, but there were a million legitimate safety rules, which in the real world would have prevented that from happening. Well, there are no rules in animation, so that briefcase opens and everything goes up in a way that it never otherwise would have. Megan Boone had to do a lot of physical training for the show. Megan revealed in an interview, I participated a lot physically in the show. I've been doing Krav Maga and also weight training, and I'm in the best physical shape of my life to prepare to do this. It's very vessel, and it's a very physical role. Although, it's possible that Megan might have reduced her rigorous exercises when she was expecting. Shooting sometimes lasted for 12 hours. Megan revealed to News Channel 5, you see quick flashes, it's all edited together. It looks really slick and engaging, and we're in the middle of a snowbank for 12 hours some days, so the glamour kind of wears off at times. She further said, I think I work more now than I used to when I was awake during the day. How stressful can it get? The return of the late Brian Denny's Dom. Season 7 had to be drawn to an end earlier than planned. After the tragic loss of the Blacklist star Brian Denny in April 2020 at the age of 81, viewers of the series were worried that there wouldn't be a conclusion on the character Dom, which was played by the late star. The producers of the show assured fans during an interview with Deadline they are yet to see the last of the character, John said. Fans will get to see Brian again. We're working with existing and previously filmed footage to complete the season finale. To stream the show, Netflix was paying $2 million per episode. A few weeks before Season 2 of the popular series premiered in September 2014, reports had it that Netflix paid a handsome sum of money for streaming rights of NBC's popular crime series. This happened when Netflix had to search for ways to keep customers satisfied, even if it meant costing them about $44 million per season, making it $2 million per episode for a duration of one hour. The deal was reported to be the largest fee paid by the platform at the time, as expected, because that's a huge sum of money. That's a wrap, guys. That's all the behind-the-scenes footage of the blacklist that we have for you today. This was a fun ride. I hope you liked every beat of it. I'll leave you with my favorite quote from Reddington. Revenge isn't passion. It's a disease that eats at your mind and poisons your soul. Let love lead. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for similar videos and other exciting content. Ciao.